Hi, everyone. Welcome to Studio Boutique. And thank you guys so much for attending our virtual party to celebrate the one year anniversary of Boutique NYC. This evening, we're joined by two very special guests who I'm super excited to introduce to you. We have Carrie Ingram and we have Deanna Cortezes, who together make up the duo known as Half and Half Beauty, which we're really, really excited to talk to you about today. So I'm going to give a really quick intro to these very special guests. Carrie, first and foremost, Carrie is a Maryland based beauty and fashion content creator who wants to bring better representation for women of color online. She mixes her glam aesthetic with real life humor, which is facts, <laughs> and has created a community that embraces all aspects of their uniqueness. She hopes to bring more light to Afro Latina women in beauty and to black women being accepted into more feminine aesthetics. And she was also a finalist in the Too Faced Born This Way competition for 2020, which is so awesome. So welcome to Carrie. And I'm very excited also to introduce Deanna. So Deanna is a 23 year old makeup artist, painter and barista in Maryland. Some of her favorite kinds of looks are lots of glitter, which I got going on today for our disco party, color and even editorial looks. She has worked at both Ulta and Sephora, which is actually where she met Carrie and where I met Carrie as well. And she hopes to continue her independent artistry in makeup when this crazy pandemic is finally over. So thank you to Deanna and Carrie for being here. Welcome, you guys. We're so excited to have you. So you. this is Half and Half Beauty. We have Deanna and Carrie. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I have a couple fun questions to ask you guys. And we're really excited to learn about Half and Half Beauty and hear about the work you guys are doing. So. First, I have a question for Miss Carrie. So Carrie, you have amassed over 14 and a half thousand subscribers on YouTube, which is so awesome. In addition to creating content for your own Instagram, Facebook, and so many other projects, you're like doing so much. I don't know how you do it and it's amazing. So tell us about your growth journey as a small YouTuber and beauty blogger. How do you plan all this awesome content that you make and grow your channel while still balancing your super busy life? Um, well, thanks for having me first off. Um, I wish I had a clear cut answer to how I balance everything, but I kind of <laughs> just cross my fingers and hope for survival. Um, my Journey starting off as a content creator is not really that unique. I think we all kind of start creating content, one, because you want to express yourself, and two, you had free time on your hands. For me, I had like zero friends. So I was like, I might as well go online, make some content, and meet people online. And it just really started off as a hobby. I didn't think that I was going to become like an influencer or a content creator when I began, but it's just something that I've a mass because I've reached out to people, I've made friends, and it's more so like a community. I hate calling myself an influencer um, <laughs> just because I, I know that I can give some type of influence to the people that follow me, but I really look at them more as friends now. So I started in high school, my videos were terrible, and some of them are still up online, but I kind of just keep them up more so for showing progress, uh, less so for teaching people things. And I don't think my content really got good until I started working at Sephora because they train you really well there. Um, and because we had consistent training, I was learning a lot of different things. I was being able to practice different techniques on different faces, not just my own. And I think I really grew as a beauty person, not just a content creator for the three years I was there. And I've just continued creating that content since then. And I've been lucky enough to participate in like the Too Faced Beauty competition that you had mentioned. That was crazy because I didn't think I was even going to make it to the top 15 that they chose to compete. So when I got a DM from them, I was like, what? This is real. Somebody hacked their account. And I, I really like that experience, especially because sometimes as a content creator, you can get a little bit of stressed out and like tired and um, just, it's a lot sometimes. And you feel like, comparing yourself to other people, it's kind of hard to keep up. And I think I was in that mindset when I started that competition and they gave us like five hours each day to crank out a look that they told you in the morning of each day, but oh you also God. had to edit it, you had to post <laughs> it and you had to hope for the best. So yeah. that adrenaline rush of that competition really showed me and proved to myself that I can do this and I am a good content creator and I have made so much progress over the years. So I'm just hoping to continue doing what I have been and just having fun while doing it. My goal isn't to necessarily amass a whole bunch of people who just want to follow me blindly. I would really want to make a difference in the beauty community and what I do. So 
I'm happy being a micro influencer for now and we'll see where it where it goes. And to answer your part of the question about balance, again, I just kind of hope for the best. I'm a Dang planner it. person. Yeah. <laughs> I, I write down all my stuff to do in my planner because I have a terrible memory. So there's no way I'm going to remember everything. And I'm lucky enough to also have a job that centers around social media outside of the beauty industry. So I'm always on my phone or on some type of technology. So I can kind of slip in there and do my beauty content while I'm working on my actual work assignments. But it's been fun so far. Yeah, definitely. And I like a lot of the stuff you touched on, especially about work-life balance, because I, I, if you guys don't know, I know Carrie because we worked at Sephora together, so I can definitely agree. And Deanna worked at Sephora, same Sephora as us, is, which is where she met Carrie. So we all kind of have that background of, you know, that really strong training and basis within the beauty industry that kind of helps us, um, you know, have this perspective on it and what, you know, people are looking for in terms of not just content, but just beauty in general. And that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about as we continue is some of the perspectives that you gained both as Latina women um, and, you know, having that experience at Sephora and some of the trends and things that you've seen and how it's been able to help you create content. So that's an awesome answer. And thank you so much um, again for being here and for sharing your tips. Cause I know a lot of people watching are probably curious, you know, about creating beauty content. And like Carrie said, it's not always, it's not about like, oh, how can I gain as many followers as possible? It's really about how can I, you know, use my perspective and things I know to make a difference with others. So that is perfect. And thank you so much. So our next question is for Deanna. So Deanna, you also recently started your own YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. In addition to creating content, of course, on Instagram, you run an Etsy shop and so much more, I'm sure. So tell us what your experience has been like so far as a content creator and how you're promoting, you know, positivity and this really great message through the things that you do and you create. All right. So um, kind of what Carrie said I kind of just cross my fingers and hope for the best. <laughs> no, honestly. Uh, we really do. And I think some of the best work and some of like the best looks that I've come up with come from a place of, all right, how not of, sorry, I can't speak right because there's so many things I want to say about this. Like they do not come from a place of, oh, how many likes can I get off of this? What's the mm -hmm. engagement of this? Which is in the end, a good thing in a way, because you want people to be, to like what you're putting out and to what they can relate to it. But it comes from a place of, do I genuinely like this? Are people going to enjoy watching me and all of that? And like, I had YouTube with that kind of mentality of, am I going to do just beauty? Am I going to do lifestyle? Am I going to do some funny stuff? I don't know. And my first video, I believe, I privated because I just, I didn't like it. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Um, but then after that, I was like, no, just put up what you want. Just introduce yourself, talk about yourself and it'll work out. And so that's what I did. And it's all right. I got 40 subscribers and that's cool. 40 people care about me. <laughs> I am one of them. So <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just kind of, I just kind of go with the flow. As of right now, I'm taking a really small break from it because I want to sit down and plan some things. Right. Um, I want to integrate some of Half and Half Beauty into it. Um, once Carrie and I have both of our vaccines out of the way after the two wait, two week wait period is up, we're most definitely going to be doing some things together with it. Um, and hopefully I'll have her on my channel sometime soon when that is all said and done. Um, but yeah, I just kind of found being myself and not worrying about what I am coming off as online is important. And growing up seeing, like, I love Shakira. I'm Colombian. Mm -hmm. So she is one of my favorite people ever. And she's like, her beauty, like her makeup is very natural. Sometimes it's very out there. Sometimes it's not. But her personality is what sticks out to me the most. Mm -hmm. She's very smart and she has like an interview I think with like Katie Couric like years ago she talks about how women are diamonds and there's so many facets to them and there's so many things that we're capable of that go way beyond our bodies and our beauty but we can totally choose to put out whatever we want to to exhibit who we are and so seeing her growing up makes me 
really happy and I like listen to her music all the time went to her concert a few years ago when concerts were still a thing <laughs> uh, <laughs> which I want to go back for that but um she's a big influence in my life and like Sofia Vergara and like all of those people and I, I love her and she's so funny and just all of that tied together is what I want to present online I feel like there's a lot of Latin women and men and just people in the world that are like well am I gonna be like that um what's the word like am I going to be that representation that people need when you just have to be yourself and that's yeah. really all you need. like I love when we started Half and Half Beauty and when we came up with that idea, I, it was mainly Carrie's idea. And we were talking about how there's not a lot of Afro-Latinos that are represented like in a good way and like in a way that is true. And I feel like we have to kind of put on this facade of like, we're strong and sexy and we can do it, but like, it's okay to be weird. It's okay to yep. <laughs> have a different personality that isn't portrayed in media. So I think, yeah, that's kind of all over the place, but I think that that's, oh, no, that's perfect. You touched on so many, so many important things and you actually <laughs> provided a great segue into our next question, which is about half and half beauty. So I'm really glad you touched on those topics of representation for Latina women and men and Afro Latina women and men. So perfect segue. So thank you for that amazing answer. Um, so we know that the two of you met while working at Sephora, which, as I said, that's how I met Carrie. And we all, the three of us come from the same roots, the same Sephora. So that's so awesome. And I'm really happy to be here with the two of you today. So you met while working at Sephora and you've been friends and collaborating together ever since. So what we're super excited to talk to you about today is the newest project you launched, which of course is Half and Half Beauty. So your joint Instagram account, Half and Half Beauty, tell us about it. Tell us about Half and Half. How did you come up with the idea and what's the mission behind it? You can, you know, Carrie, Deanna, both chip in. Let's hear about Half and Half Beauty. Yeah, totally. Um, so Half and Half, like Deanna had mentioned, kind of stemmed from both a, a really solid idea of underrepresented people, but also my randomness. I, I texted Deanna while I was driving to college and I tend to have like these really random thoughts. So I was just kind of like chilling, vibing. And then I was like, half and half would be an awesome beauty related name, but I didn't know what the purpose would be behind. So I was stuck in traffic. So I had extra time to think about it. And then I ended up texting her because I was like, this is perfect. We're both half Hispanic in some way. And then we're half something else. We can represent different complexions, different perspectives in the beauty industry. And I think it's strong when you bring those differences together. So I kind of just shot her a text and she was like, bet, let's do this. And this was in 20, like 2018, I think. Um, and yeah, you know, it, it was three years ago now. Um, so I texted her and I was like, we should start an Instagram account, do this. But we didn't really have like a solid idea. But I do remember that morning we were like, let's at least make the Instagram account so we have the name. And then we did not talk about half and half for like a year or so because of our crazy schedules, <laughs> the pandemic going on, like totally forgot about it. And then I think around like halfway through 2020, Dana had brought it up to me and she was like, do you remember half and half? Like we need to start like talking about it. And I was like, you're right. Remember that? So, uh, <laughs> um, so half and half beauty ever since it's just been us really planning on ways to still make fun beauty content, but really showcase as Deanna said, that you can look different, you can be different, you don't have to fit into these stereotypes that we're used to seeing in media. And I, I'm so excited to do it, especially because, you know, most people look at me and they can kind of tell that I'm mixed, but nine times out of 10, they just assume like I'm black and something else. And like, they don't know what Afro-Latina is, they've never heard of mm -hmm. it. And when I tell them I'm Puerto Rican, they're like, but you don't look Puerto Rican. And I'm like, Okay, so <laughs> I think- <laughs> Like, I what think am I important. supposed to look like? Right, like, like, like this is me. Yeah, so um, I think it's really important to bring that to the table and to say, look, we look different, but we can relate to all of you. And um, one of the goals, too, that Deanna and I have is not just featuring ourselves and not just focusing mainly on the Hispanic community. I mean, this is important, but um, also featuring other underrepresented groups, other content creators that are doing it online and really bringing together what it means to be an actually inclusive and diverse brand because a lot of brands want to jump on that bandwagon in marketing today and it's a trend but you have to be authentic 
in order to do it well. So that's our goal with half and half. Dana, I don't know. I'm sorry, but it took too long to answer that question. No, that's true. That's true. I feel like with um, one of my favorite things that we have done so far is featuring people and featuring artists. And um, one of my best friends that I actually met over the quarantine online, Bumble has a friend option. And I met one of my friends, Samia, that we featured. And she is also a black makeup artist. And she focuses on diversity and like just having fun with color. Um, if I've learned anything from Carrie and Samia and other black women in makeup is that red lipstick can either be something you stay away from or you're like, is this going to look good on me? Is this not? And we had that conversation like the first night Samia and I met and she's like, I want to wear red lipstick, but I feel like I'm going to look stupid. I'm like, just do it. It's going to look good on you. Who's who's stopping you from doing that? And like, that I'm going to talk about red lipstick way too much, but like I'm wearing it now because it reminds me of like Latin women. Right. And whenever I believe AOC says that she purposefully wears red lipstick. Yeah, I saw that interview. Things. Yep. Yeah, because like everyone was telling her, don't do it. It's just it's going to look bad. And she's like, so I'm going to do it now because you told me not to. And it looks <laughs> fire. And it looks great. And it has importance of like your words seem more powerful. And it just, it's like a comfort blanket for me. But yeah, like basically what, what she said that it's very, <laughs> you have a great have, explanation. Yeah. To have that representation because there's just, again, so many stereotypes that we kind of don't fit and we kind of want to redefine. Um, I am just super happy with it. I can say that working with Carrie has been amazing because like our meetings are, have been all over FaceTime and we get sidetracked in the first like five minutes because we're friends and we want to catch up with each other. <laughs> but I feel, I feel no pressure. I feel like I can be myself around her and I feel like whatever we put out is going to be great and people are going to love. And I love how Carrie has her humor along with her beauty. And like we were, I think, um, posting our reels or TikToks or whatever in our account. I did one where I was dancing to kiss me more and I put my phone up on this plant and I was like, I'm just going to dance. And that's going to be my TikTok <laughs> because sometimes that's just, that's just life. It's just no I'm, I'm dancing to both cat in my room. But yeah, the goal, the main goal with half and half beauty is just to have fun and to be yourself. And that representation is super important. And we're going to keep doing that. And I'm, I'm so proud of it. It's like yes, our little baby. Um, absolutely. Yes. And I'm, I'm so proud and happy for you guys and proud of you guys too. Um, because just like you said, you know, a lot of brands really claim to be inclusive because, you know, maybe it's a buzzword and, you know, it's, they know it's more important nowadays, but they're talking the talk, but not exactly walking the walk. And um, that's something we really care about at Boutique, especially because all of the brands we work with are mission-driven, value-driven brands. So our brands, you know, really actually care about taking actions to be more inclusive, to be more sustainable, to be more clean, all these different things. So that's another reason I really wanted to invite the two of you from Half and Half Beauty to talk about Half and Half Beauty, because it just really aligns with our values at Boutique. And um, everything you said is just absolutely true. And, you know, representation is so important. And I love what you, how you spoke about um, how you're featuring other influencers, Black women, you know, Latina women, and other underrepresented um, communities on Half and Half Beauty. So we will, of course, throw up your um, handle. But if you haven't already, please follow at Half and Half Beauty on Instagram, because there's going to be a lot coming up. And we will continue to talk about that as we go on. But thank you so much for telling us about that. Um, and we're so excited. So Another, you know, pretty good segue. So my next question is for Carrie. So as both a Black woman and Latina woman, you, of course, have personal perspective on this need for more diversity and inclusion when it comes to the beauty industry. So what does diversity and beauty look like to you, mean to you? Um, and if you want, what are your, some of your favorite brands that you feel are doing a good job at promoting these values? Because like we said, a lot of them say it, but oh, there's only a few that are really, you know, doing it. So tell us about that. Yeah, exactly what you said. Um, for me, 
I think diversity and inclusion and beauty goes beyond what you see on your Instagram or YouTube pages for any brands. It's about starting at the core. So the brands that have people who are from different communities represented well, underrepresented on the board, you know, on the team that's making this brand work, that's making these products. Um, it starts there because you really need to have an honest and authentic voice and uh, an ear that hears all of these voices in order to make a good, authentic, inclusive brand. I think, again, like a lot of brands, they just use, oh, we're inclusive, oh, we're diverse as buzzwords, and they'll showcase different influencers on their pages. And that's a great start. But I think if you're not having these people actually help make the decisions for your brand, it's going to be really hard to be authentic and to know where you're going and to know if you're going to make a mistake or if you're going to say something that might be problematic or if all of your shades or formulas fit a wide range of people. So I think for me, it starts from the core. And I know a lot of people use this brand as an example, but I really do love Fenty Beauty because I think that was the first time for myself that I felt like, wow, there's complexion products that I don't have to worry about looking orange with, or there's shades that actually will work for me and for other people, other women who are darker than me. And we didn't have to like blink an eye, you know, like we just go to Fenty Beauty and we know there's, there's something there for us. And even with Fenty, they've made mistakes in marketing and they've been called out for some of the mistakes they've made. They haven't been nearly as bad as other brands, but they own up <laughs> to the fact that they're like, I might not know that this word that I use to label this product would have come off this way. And I, I think that that's honorable is to own up to the problems that you might face down the line, but to again, have a team that's diverse enough to help you to prevent those in the first place. And um, I just hope that the buzzwords get lost and yeah. more action is taken because really the diverse brands are the ones that don't have to say they're diverse. You just know it without them even having to advertise That's it. True. So true. I, I am hoping that there's a shift and I'm really happy, not with the pandemic, but with everyone having <laughs> time, <COVID>. yeah. <laughs> with everyone having more time inside, I personally have seen a lot more advertisements on social media about small businesses being started, yeah. usually by women of color. And it's really exciting because, you know, they know how to market and how to do stuff authentically enough that it actually works for people. So I do think that there will be a shift. I just don't know how long it will take. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just, again, crossing the fingers, okay? That's it's like my life advice here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's super important. Again, what you just said, I just wanna touch on and emphasize. Um, what's so cool about seeing these indie brands, you know, like the ones we work with at Boutique and the ones that are emerging during the pandemic is like you said, they are doing this because they want, you know, Black women, Latina women, they want people to be able to use their products. They're not doing it because, oh, diversity is hot right now and I can make some money off of promoting, you know, my diverse brand. It's not that at all. It's like you said, they actually want to make a difference and they want to make products that work for people who look like them and who don't look like them. So that's just super important what you touched on. And that's like you said, it really goes to the core and Fenty Beauty. I love, of course, that you brought up Fenty because um, I know you and I worked at Sephora when Fenty launched and that was just such a special and cool time because we had so many customers come in you know, new customers who just never felt that they there was anything for them there before. And they came in and it was like a new experience because they knew like Rihanna had their back. They're right. like, there's something <laughs> for me here. And they're like, oh, I can't, there is a foundation for me. Like there is a, a highlighter that complements my skin tone. Um, so I just, I love that you touched on that. And that's so important. Um, so similar question for Deanna, of course. So you, of course, are also a Latina woman. Um, so what does diversity and inclusion within the beauty industry mean to you? Because I know we all have, you know, our thoughts and opinions on diversity, but we also have, you know, our own unique perspective. So Carrie, of course, is, you know, Black woman, Latina woman, you're half Colombian. So, you know, what is your unique perspective on diversity? And in your opinion, how can brands better represent women and men of different backgrounds, races, identities, all the above? So with that, I feel like diversity, like, kind of what everything's been said it's been like thrown around as like a buzzword and like oh like we're a diverse company but they're really not and um when it comes to honestly my heart with the lgbt community i feel like there's more people um that are in that 
community that are also Latin that are very underrepresented. And when I see certain advertisements with like, um, like non-binary people or like queer people that have makeup on, but they have facial hair and they're also Mexican, they're also Colombian, things like that really stick out to me because like brands and companies will like step into the direction of, oh, we're diverse, oh, we're inclusive. And they put like a darker skinned woman or a darker skinned person. And they're like, they're, that's it. And then I feel like we've made some improvement. And then it kind of stops. And then after that, like kind of going off of Fenty, um, how she has, Rihanna has her makeup line, her skincare line, but also her lingerie line that I think, I mean, she's the genius, we know this, but all of her stuff goes very well together because there's people in that brand that look just like the consumer and they're not all one look. And there's like, I'm pretty sure Fenty has underwear for men now. Like they have boxers now. And it looks, it just, it shows that the people that are in this market and that are in this industry don't all look the same and that they want to feel beautiful and they want to feel like themselves, like a better version of themselves or whatever. And I love seeing that. And I love being able to like scroll through my Instagram feed and be like, oh, there's like a girl that has like, I have a bunch of like tattoos over my body that are like, kind, they kind of look like sketchbook. Carrie and I were talking about tattoos yesterday and how my mom said for as long as <laughs> I lived here or as long as I was alive, um, I could never get another tattoo because that's a very Latin thing. Um, <laughs> but I like have seen like girls that are a little bit more like quirky or they're like a little bit more like if you could see my room right now, like it looks like a 90s Latin stoner threw up all over it. There's some tie dye, there's some plants, there's some things like we're not all just this fiery Selena version. Like there's mm. been, like I kind of refer to back like many different facets of us. So when I see more like indie brands that are focused on like different types of looks or different types of aesthetics, it makes me feel represented because at the end of the day, we're all living, breathing people. We just have different ethnicities and different races and that's, that's really it. And we can choose to present ourselves to the world however we want to present ourselves. And that's a really good thing. And I'm happy that it's kind of evolving now. Um, but please, please remind me again of the second part of the question because I had to prepare. Oh, no, you, did, you did a great job answering it. Um, you know, it was just kind of what diversity and inclusion means to you, which of course you did a great job answering and how brands can better represent women and men, um, which again, you touched on and Carrie touched on as well, is it really goes to the core. And I, I love a lot of what you said, Deanna, about how you see yourself in a lot of these, the companies that are doing it right. And I can attest that too. Of course, I, I am white. I, you know, not, don't have the perspective of, you know, a black woman or Latina woman, but even things like with Savage X Fenty, like I, mm -hmm. I would consider myself a plus size person and just seeing that in their advertising, you know, it makes me feel more confident and comfortable with myself. And I'm like, oh, they have something for me. They thought of me and they thought of women and men who might look like me or experience something like me, even if it's not, you know, my skin tone or background, it's still all of those things that they've thought of inclusivity as a whole. And it's not like we said, just a money grab, like, oh, um, who can release the most shades of foundation? Because if we top Fenty, then we're more inclusive than them. Like, it's not like that at all. It's about really showcasing these different people. So I love what you said about that, Deanna. And that's just so true. Um, and even, even in ads, you know, showing women and men just with imperfections, which aren't imperfections, they're, you know, real people. If, you know, women with acne, like we, everyone gets, you know, breakouts and pimples. Women um, who have a dark skin tone that, you know, 99% of brands don't have colors for them or even super, super fair light skin tones, um, just all of the above. So I, that was a really great answer and you touched on some really important things. So thank you so much. Um, so again, a, a kind of a good segue because these all questions kind of go together. So um, you've both worked at Sephora and I've worked at Sephora as well. And Deanna, you've worked at Ulta too. So um, you're, you know, super familiar with beauty retail and, you know, in general, what consumers look for and what struggles they may 
you know, encounter as, um, you know, women of color, men of color, or just anybody who's not super familiar shopping, you know, for beauty products or haven't felt represented before, and they might not necessarily think there's something there for them. So what are some of the things you've learned while working at Sephora or Ulta that inspired you to be so passionate about representation and beauty? And were there any experiences that stuck with you um, with a customer or anything that you'd like to share that helped, you know, inspire your passion? Both, uh, either, either or, whoever wants to jump in. Um, I can say we could all speak for Sephora, but something I actually learned when I was at Ulta, um, Ulta is, I'm assuming that everyone that is watching this knows that they have a drugstore side and they have a high end side. And I'm not gonna lie. The first time I stepped into an Ulta, I was very scared. Cause I was like, here is all of this, like a Lancome counter and all of these super pretty things. And then there's like the cover girl tester that's laying on the floor on the other side. So what am I going to look like if I step into either like realm of this store, am I going to be looked at as different because I'm getting luxury or am I going to be looked as like another basic person? Cause I'm getting a mascara from cover girl. And that's like never the case really when I worked there, I, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I've had my fair share of managers coming up to me when I was at Ulta saying like, Oh, like maybe keep an eye on that person. And they never said it, but it was because they were of darker skin yep. or because of a person that was speaking in Spanish and they felt like a coworker of mine or whoever mine felt slightly offended because they couldn't understand what they were saying. When really I can tell you that they were not talking about you. Um, but when it came to that kind of stuff, I learned that just, I feel like it's common sense, but being honest and being open and asking people like, do you, I see that you don't have a lot of makeup on. Are you new to it? Is there stuff that you don't know too much about yet? If not, if that is the case, then let me help you. Like, let's just talk about it. Um, making sure that you're not like talking down to someone because they either are not wearing a lot of makeup um, or whatever their knowledge is, but being like, what do you like? And I remember this one elderly woman and just off of her looks, I believe that she was also mixed. She was black and I think Mexican. And she was like, I don't know. I kind of want to try color. I want to try some blue. I want to incorporate some blue. And I was like, okay, let's get some blue. So she really liked neutral, kind of like the look I have on right now, like neutral eyes, but she wanted to incorporate blue. And so obviously pre-pandemic, this was about a year or no, about two years ago, I think. Um, I gave her a brush, I cleaned it off and I gave her a uh, blue eyeshadow and she just like took her makeup off and then just put it all over her eye. And she's like, I like this, but it was like a striking blue color. I personally wouldn't go for it. I'd maybe do like an eyeliner or something underneath, but she was so happy with it. She's like, I'm going to buy this one. That's the one. <laughs> you should do it. You should totally do it. And she was like, I don't know. Well, my husband think I'm too. I'm like, screw what your husband thinks. I don't care what your husband thinks. Do you like this? Then you should get it. And so that that is like a simple experience, but it stuck out to me. No, it's was, those little ones that stick yeah. with you. Um, she looked so happy afterwards. And people that walk into Sephora's or Ulta's feel really intimidated. And we I've been told that I'm like, they're super intimidated because they either don't know a lot about makeup or they feel like they're going to be judged because of the people that are there. And we're totally not judging you. We just want to make sure that you're comfortable and that you're having a good time and you're spending your money in places that you feel like you feel confident in. Mm -hmm. And that enters the whole conversation of like different brands that are Latin owned, black owned, and all of that, that um, you feel good about purchasing that stuff and contributing to that community. So that... Yeah, I hope she's doing well. I hope that lady's doing well. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> Absolutely. No, thank you for sharing. That's awesome. And I, I can think of so many just like little experiences like that. Um, I'll, I'll let Carrie speak first. And then I, I also have something that I just remembered that I'd love to share um, in the same topic. But that was great, Deanna. That's so important. Um, everything that you said, it's just so important to get these experiences, you know, people do walk in and they feel intimidated, especially women of color, men who walk in and they, you know, want to try. I had um, somebody, a boy who came in Sephora and 
he wanted, he was having a photo shoot done soon and he struggled with acne and he, he wanted something to cover it up, but you can tell he felt a little embarrassed or uncomfortable to ask for help because he's a boy in Sephora um, who doesn't typically wear makeup. So just things like that. I'm really glad you touched on that. And that's super important. So thank you. And I'll, I'll let Carrie go as well. Yeah, totally. I, I think similarly to both of you, it's about the in one-on-one -on -one individual experience, individual experiences, sorry, I can't talk today, that you have sometimes that really stick with you. Um, for me, when I was working at Sephora, I think when I first started, there was maybe two or three other women of color on our team. And as I continued on, I ended up being like the only woman of color at one point on our team. And so I had different experiences in the sense that, you know, if a white woman came in, I would help them as usual. There was really no difference in that. But when people of color came in, they specifically kind of felt like they could trust me a little bit more because I got some of the conditions that we deal with. Like we deal with more hyperpigmentation than other complexions. So things like that. Um, it's a sense of comfort you have. Like if you talk to people of color, anybody who has textured hair, for example, they feel a lot more comfortable going into a hair salon when there's people there that have the same complexion or hair type that they do because they know that their hair will be done well, as opposed to going somewhere where you don't see people who look like you. So I think similarly going into the beauty side, the makeup and skincare side of things, when you see someone that looks like you, you feel a little less intimidated. And um, one of the experiences that I really, like I, I love this experience out of all of my time at Sephora was there is a woman who came in and she was dealing with melasma and she had really bad hyperpigmentation like on one half of her face and she couldn't figure out how to cover it. And Dana, I think you might have actually Girl, been there. I was I gonna bring this up because yeah. I was there and I remember that. <laughs> And yeah, so we were all um, crying at the beauty <laughs> studio. Oh my God. Yeah. Like she was, she was so stressed about it. And she was like, I don't know what to do. I've been trying to cover this up for however long her daughter came with her. And at one point you guys had pulled me and asked like, what, what would you do? And I was like, girl, just color correct it. Cause I, I usually color correct underneath my eyes. And it's something that's mm -hmm. common for women of color to do. And so I, color corrected and I helped her cover it up and she started crying because she was like, I've never been able to find a way to feel comfortable in my own skin with this. Um, and it's those type of moments that you can have and really change somebody, but also feel like you can relate to them that matter. And I think having those experiences, especially with women of color while I worked at Sephora, made me that much more passionate about continuing to be a content creator because I want people to see my content and go, I can relate to this girl. Like she's not you know, she's weird. She's uh, has a, a weird sense of humor, but she's she doesn't look like everyone else that I'm trying to look like, but don't naturally look like. She looks like me. I get her sense of humor. I get that sometimes things are ratchet, okay? We're not always glamorous. We're not always up to par with what we see on, you know, advertisements and online all the time. And I think that that, that reality is something that's important um, to showcase both online and in person with the people that you interact with. So... Yeah, I just, I really feel like it's important to just, like Deanna said, be yourself and give every ounce of yourself to people that you interact with on a daily basis, whether it be online or in person, because you can really help to build up that representation. And even if you're watching this and you are white, you can still make that difference. Like Dana is with it, okay? She <laughs> might not be a woman of color, but Dana has always been super understanding. I've never felt like I was being judged. And I feel like with the clients that you work with at Sephora when I was there with you, you were always on it, whether or not they were a woman of color or somebody else or a man. Um, and I, I just think it's important. We all need to just stop mm -hmm. trying to be what we have seen for so long as acceptable in society and just be what you are and accept other people who are different it's just easier to live that way honestly absolutely yes I'm so glad you brought that up because I was thinking of that same exact experience and I have another as well but we were all she had us crying in the yeah. car we were, we were all like just getting teary-eyed because you could tell like just the tips Carrie gave her and you know she showed her at beauty at the beauty studio like it really moved her in that moment. I'm sure it changed her life. She's like, oh my gosh, I there is something for me. There is somebody who understands my struggle and can help me. And it, it's just so important. And even what Carrie said as well, there were um, a lot of times when people, you know, would call to schedule their makeup and they would say, is there anybody, you know, who who's comfortable doing makeup on a dark skin person or a dark skin woman? And, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like a call out. Like we have to think like, 
can somebody do this besides Carrie? Of course, um, we're all you know trained there, and we can all help anybody. But there are things that are important that you know we want the customer to feel comfortable. And if they're going to feel more comfortable having a woman of color work on them in their hair and their skin, you know, you have to understand that, and it's not offensive. I would never be offended um, as a, per a non person of color if somebody wanted somebody a, a woman of color to help them. I mean that it is, you know, it's important and it makes them feel welcome and comforted. But of course, as non, you know, people of color, we have to be accepting of this and, you know, learn from it. I've, I got so much education from Sephora and from Carrie, of course, on just all of these things. And it was such a great experience. And I remember um, there was a woman, we had a customer who started coming to us, um, towards the end of when I was working at Sephora, but she was a transgender woman and she was so sweet and you could tell, well, she shared part of her story. She was, you know, a newly, newly transitioning transgender woman. So it was totally, this world was totally new to her. And um, you could tell she was a little apprehensive, a little uncomfortable being there because, you know, are people going to stare at me? Like, I don't know what I'm doing, that type of thing. But it was, it was just such a, a touching, heartfelt experience to be able to sit down with her and, you know, help her find the products she needed and to see like her confidence and her demeanor just change once she, you know, found something that works for her and to be accepted and represented and like, you're welcome here and beauty is for everybody. It's not just for, you know, white women that you see like on Instagram, like, you know what I mean? So so many experiences at Sephora that really um, drove my passion and of course your both of your passions as well so mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing that and it's it's super important one more thing I know I'm rambling but something else I wanted to touch on that you touched on Carrie is that um, a lot of, I mean a lot of people will say like oh I don't see color as kind of a thing to you know it's it's not about not seeing color. It's about seeing the color and embracing the color. You can see, you know, if a black woman, a dark, beautiful, black, dark skinned woman comes in the store, you don't have to act like she isn't black. Right. <laughs> she is. And you, you're going to help her and you're going to find something that works for her beautiful skin tone. You're going to find something that works, you know, for her hair you don't have to pretend that there isn't diversity where it's about celebrating it, not acting blind to it. So mm -hmm. that's, that's something I wanted to touch on because um, both you, Deanna and Carrie kind of, you know, brought points up that sparked that in my mind as, you know, a white person, I hear that so much. People talk about like, Oh, I don't see color. Like why, it, why does it have to be about race or color? it's not about hiding the fact that there's different colors out there. It's about embracing it, celebrating it, being comfortable with it and knowing how to represent those different, you know, colors. It's about diversity. I mean, diversity is, it makes the world just so much better in my opinion. So I, I just wanted to touch on that, throw that out there. So there's something super small. I don't mean to interrupt, but I oh, want to no, go for it. I think would be helpful to a lot of people. Um, to a lot of white people and no matter what community, it is not a bad thing to ask questions and do it. Just ask respectful questions. Like if you are a white woman in beauty and there are black women or Latin women that are darker, like Middle Eastern, whoever that comes into your store and you don't know, just be like, hey, I don't know exactly what it is that you want, what it is that you like. What are things that inspire you? um, that I can help you with. And like with Carrie, when we were talking about not to give too many things away, we were talking things about half and half beauty and we were mentioning hair care. And I don't know a lot about textured hair. I have slightly wavy hair because I braided it overnight because it was wet. My hair is very straight naturally. Um, my boyfriend is black as well. And I've learned so much about his hair over the course of our relationship the past year or so that we've been together. And I had to ask a lot of questions. I had to do a lot of research. I'm like, I don't know anything about this. So can you teach me? And that will go so far with people. And um, when it comes to certain color palettes um, with Latin women that I can say that, yes, I'm wearing red lipstick, but there's so many other things that we like. You can ask us like, what are things that are very popular in Colombia, Mexican beauty trends, Venezuelan, anything like that. Research it and ask questions because 
a lot of people will be more open and won't feel like they need to keep a lot of things to themselves. They're like, should I protect this or not? Because are you going to steal it from me? Like, if you just ask those questions, it's a good thing. So, I, sorry, I just thought of that on the Oh, no, 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 feel free. Thank you so much for sharing. That's super important. Um, mm -hmm. So, we are about, we're close to wrapping it up. So I have one final question that I love to ask you. This has been such a great conversation and I'm so glad to have you two here to talk about this. So my final question is, um, what is in the works for Half and Half Beauty? If there's anything you wanna share, I know you might wanna keep some things um, on the down low for now, but <clears throat> what can your followers or new followers um, expect moving forward? And why should everyone watching tonight come and join the half and half family. So what can you share with us? Definitely. So like Deanna had kind of touched on earlier, we definitely want to do more content in person together because we've still been doing things separately just to be safe and smart about things. Um, so hopefully as we both get fully vaccinated, that's something that we can incorporate in the future. And we also do want to feature more than just makeup artistry. We want to talk about beauty as a whole. So talk about skincare, talk about hair care, um, and still bring content that is of value and teaches things, but also is relatable and a little bit humored. And um, we hope that down the line, maybe we can branch out to things other than just our Instagram page. Um, I don't know if Deanna wants to allude to any of that, but we really want to invite everyone to join Half and Half because it is for all people. It's not just people who are half Hispanic. Um, and we we guarantee you that you will find yourself in our page as we continue on, we feature more people and we just want to foster a really nice and friendly community. I feel like there's so many things that um, definitely, without giving too many things away, but I like to incorporate, because of course we're a beauty account, um, but that's really important to me is music. I love music. And if you go to our page, you can see our highlights. Um, there, I think it's like H and H tunes or something like that. And just things that make me feel empowered and things that make me like songs that make me feel happy. Um, and like one of our first reels ever was best friend by Doja Cat and sweetie. And we did looks to it. And that's like, whenever I hear that song, I think of Carrie and I think of like our friendship as a whole, because we're both like, if, you can censor it if you need to, but we're both bad bitches that are doing great <laughs> and in all facets of our life. And um, also with certain types of activism, that's very important. Um, it's unfortunate that there are things going on in the world that are rooted in racism and are rooted in hate. Um, when the attacks on um, the Asian women happened, I believe it was in the spa. Um, and of course, Black Lives Matter is a very important thing. Um, I want to be able to invite more people in those communities to just maybe like give them our account for a day, give them our like uh, access to our stories for a day and be like, we can do as much, re as much research as we want, but never will we be able to speak on it as much as you are because you have lived this experience. So please tell your story and please spread as much awareness as you need to because you matter as well and you deserve to be seen in this space. So just ever everlasting love to everybody that is in our family. And we hope that you come on this journey with us because we're yes. super excited to be, to be here. Yes, 100%, <clears throat> excuse me. That's just so exciting to hear. And I know, you know, we don't want to give too much away, but please join um, the Half and Half Beauty family. Again, we will throw up all the Instagram handles for Deanna. It's at Deanna underscore Colombiana. And for Carrie, it's at Glamanista08. And their joint account, please go and check it out. It's at Half and Half Beauty on Instagram. Um, and we will throw it up for you guys. But Thank you so much to Carrie and Deanna for joining us this evening and being a part of the Boutique um, anniversary celebration. This has been such a, a great conversation and I'm so happy that um, I could have it with you guys. And if you guys have you know, you know questions and comments or wanna reach out to Carrie or Deanna to talk about any of this, please feel free. Um, I'm offering you guys up <laughs> as resources um, or even myself. Um, but thank you so much for joining this really important discussion on diversity and beauty with Half and Half Beauty, Deanna and Carrie. Um, so thank you guys so much for being here and um, please enjoy the rest.